Welcome back, everyone. It is Kim Russo with you again. I'm the director of America's Great Loop Cruisers Association, and this is leg nine of our Great Loop adventure aboard the Perch. Today, we're going from Jacksonville Beach to Brunswick Landing Marina. And as we left Jacksonville Beach, we were at Palm Cove Marina, and we watched Sojourn and Long Recess leave. They are headed for the St. John's River side trip. This was Sojourn's very first day on the Great Loop. And they are buddy boating with Long Recess up the St. John's River, so we wish them a great trip. If you watched yesterday's video, you know we had a little bit of a rough time getting into Palm Cove Marina because the depth was so shallow. So after the night before, we were pretty cautious about leaving this morning. It was nearing high tide, so we didn't expect as much of a problem as the day before. But as Long Recess was leaving the channel from the marina, they reported back that they saw about three feet on the way out. So that was a little concerning because we draw four, um, but we waited a little, little longer and then proceeded very cautiously. And we did find around seven feet. So I think we just did a much better job on the way out of staying in the channel than we had on our way in. Shortly after we departed, we reached the St. John's Inlet, and the current shifted from being against us to being in our favor, so we got about a two-mile-per-hour bump in our speed. The Naval Station Mayport is there on the St. John's River, and the ICW runs with the St. John's River for a short time. And then if you're taking the St. John's River side trip, you continue on the St. John's River, which is just towards uh, a little bit to port and the ICW turns to starboard. So we stayed on the ICW and continued our journey northward. Sisters Creek is a looper favorite because there's a free dock there. Um, as we passed by this morning, though, we were sad to see a sunken vessel there at the dock. Um, so hopefully that is going to be removed soon. But in fact, throughout Florida, um, particularly along the Atlantic Intracoastal Waterway, we have seen so many derelict vessels. It's almost surreal how many are abandoned um, and sunken and derelict or about to become derelict vessels. And we've worked very hard in Florida um, to differentiate those from boats at anchor like cruisers. And um, it's very easy to see the difference when you're coming through, um, but more clear than ever that there needs to be a resolution for those derelict vessels and a way to get them removed from the waterways. We also needed to take on fuel again on this cruising day, so we did our research and found the cheapest fuel where the boat is sitting right now in this track view. That is Amelia Island Marine. On the day we were here, which was March 21st, the fuel price was just under $4 a gallon. I think it was $3.97. It has since gone up, so uh, it pays to do your homework, though. A lot of places in this area were $5.50 and $6, and as I said, we paid just under 4 So taking on two to 300 gallons, it's a significant saving, so make sure you do your homework. Continuing northward, Fernandina Beach was on our starboard side. This is another looper favorite stop that lots of people really seem to like. If it was not for our mission to get to Charleston, I would have liked to have stopped here. As I've said before, uh, one of the trade-offs we are deciding to make to be able to do the loop while we're still working is that there may be a few places along the way that we'd otherwise have liked to stop if we had more time to visit. Fernandina Beach is certainly one of those, but perhaps that'll be a reason to make another trip to this area once we finish the loop. Shortly past Fernandina Beach is Kings Bay, and there is a naval sub-base there. This structure you see is actually a degaussing station for the subs, so not something you see every day as you're cruising along in the waterway. As we were entering St. Andrew's Sound, we saw the lighthouse here. This is um, kind of the last section of our run to Brunswick for today. Our stop for the night is Brunswick Landing Marina, so I'll tell you more about them in a minute. But coming through St. Andrew's Sound was a little bit choppy, not too bad, um, but we are stopping for the night at Brunswick Landing Marina. They are a brand new AGLCA sponsor, so we thank for them for their sponsorship. They have uh, a beautiful marina with extensive amenities on site, including free wine and beer three times a week free laundry, a dog park on site, and is only a short distance to walk into downtown where there are several shops and restaurants. So we are pretty happy to be tucked in here for the night, had a gorgeous sunset, and we are once again on the move tomorrow as we continue to work our way towards Charleston. 
as we always do, here is our Nebo track that we're sharing. You can see that it shows two voyages because of the fuel stop. We were underway for just under seven and a half hours, and we went a distance of 63 miles, average speed of 8.4 knots, maximum speed of 17. The red you see here on the track is not the fastest times. Um, the yellow is actually faster, but you can see that we are picking up speed through some of the more desolate areas where there are fewer no-wake zones. And we are continuing our push, what I'm now calling the March on Charleston, with our efforts to get there before an AGLCA event. So um, that was our cruising day. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon with our next leg, which will take us from Brunswick on up to Savannah, Georgia. See you soon.